Welcome to Reality Creator Alchemy. I'm Tom. And this is an update on things that have been going on here lately. I know it's been a while since we had a real video. I had a real video prepared. I did made the whole thing all out. We were going I was going to do how an alchemist makes ice cream. The only problem I had, it didn't make ice cream. <sighs> I could show you some footage of the of the ice swirling around and I was on the phone with my chemist doing it. I had the camera set up and everything. It was a little disappointing. Uh, the problem, I believe, is we, I could only get the ice, the ice, the cream itself down to 20 degrees F, uh, 21 degrees F. It needs to be below 20 degrees F in order to turn into a solid. And the water on the outside was 16 degrees F, which is pretty darn cold. But I think the problem was I used a glass beaker on the inside of it. And it was too much insulation and that coldness couldn't transfer. And normally the experiment is done with plastic bags. It's quite messy. You put, you put the, the ice cube water mix in a big plastic bag on the outside. And then you put another plastic bag on the inside, which has the ice cream in it. And you... Shake it up and, until the ice cream turns hard. My way, I think, is going to produce really fantastic looking custard. So I'm going to try it again with a plastic beaker on the inside and see if I can get the, the thing to work. And then hopefully I'll have that video for you. So uh, that was disappointing, but um, what else is going on here? A few things are going on here. First, this is my top for my... Uh, laser setup. Now you've seen that it got tremendous amount of hits uh, in the you know in the short video on the laser setup. Now the problem I'm having with this is the laser light is extremely bright. <sighs> Adjusting these lasers is going to be I cannot use the naked eye to adjust these lasers. That being said I've ordered special laser glasses tuned to 532 nanometers for the green lasers that I'm using. That's supposed to come today, those glasses. But I still think those are not going to be, I still think they're going to be, the, the laser light is going to be too bright even using those, but I still require those to protect my eyes while I am working with it. So what am I doing? I'm printing a shield to go around here to block this so you, I can't look inside here. Well, now how do we, how am I going to adjust these lasers or even see what's happening on the inside? Well, what I've come up with is my Blink indoor camera, my doggy cam that I used to watch uh, Lab Assistant Kilo when I'm not here. So I'm going to use the Blink camera pointed at the beaker with an opening on the side and use the, my, my uh, phone to watch the image and try to adjust the lasers and get them exactly in the center of where we need to be. Uh, and then filming it, I, you know, we could, I could always film it from the side. I don't really have to look at it from the front. Uh, we have to protect our eyes. I mean, weird things, I, you know, I was investigating getting uh, welding lasers. And you know what I found out? Welding laser, even though it's really, really dark, does not block the ultraviolet part of these lasers. So you, I could have really dark, you could have really, we wear on really dark lenses and the ultraviolet part's still going to come right through and you could damage your, your retinas of your eyes. Amazing what you find out. It's, you know, when you're doing anything new and, you know, it, exploring and investigating all the hazards and things like that is always, always um, mandatory. So, like I said, I've ordered the special glasses that will cut down the brightness of the 532 nanometer range, so I won't have any problem there. I've also offered an, ordered a new, these are, these are I think 04 darkness glasses. I've ordered 00 darkness glasses. They'll come on, they're coming on Monday. And I plan to use a combination of that plus the the, the red uh, lenses for the green lasers so I can get to adjusting adjusting them. So I did get managed to get one adjusted, but it's still uh, 
it's still really dangerous. I'm not going to adjust any more of these until I got total protection on this. And then we're going to, I'm going to move forward with the laser ablation project. Ablation, I think that's how you say it. Oh, what else is going on? All right. Vanadium, chromium, and cobalt. And you know, a while ago, I talked about vanadium, chromium, and cobalt. And so I sent it out to my testers. And you know what? It doesn't work. I sent it out to several people, and they all report they don't get the same effects that I get from it. So I don't know. I, this, is a, this is a real mystery on, on the vanadium, chromium, cobalt thing. So more, more on that as time goes on. This is a um, thousand milliliter beaker. I've, I finally got around to, well, a few weeks ago, it isn't recent, make the thousand milliliter tops for, my, for these beakers. All right, this is a thousand milliliter top, and this one actually is a 600 milliliter top. And that blueprint, of course, has been on the website. It's still on the website for those of you that want to use the 1,000 milliliter beakers. Now, right now, on the website, I have the 6.1 version tops. This here is a 6.2 version top. There's a little bit difference in the 6.2 version top. The problem I had the 6.1 version top was it was nice and all, but they rotated around too much. I had to wind up gluing them in place actually to hold them in, to hold them steady or they would, they would rotate. So the 6.2 version has magnets. I don't know if you could see it. There's a little magnet here and there's a little magnet, magnet here. And the magnet holds it in place like that. So this seems to work out pretty good. It's a little bit wobbly than, I, than I'd like, but it does seem to work. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm still in the testing phase for the 6.2 version thing. But if you're using the 6.1 version, really all you have to do is put a dab of hot glue on top to keep it from moving around. For now, uh, so we'll see. I know some people were interested in buying my tops. If I do sell the tops, it's going to be the 6.2 version that I sell, but it's not ready yet. The glue is the problem. I have the glue. I can't find the glue. The only thing I have right now is hot glue to hot glue the tubes to here, and um, that eventually will come loose, and you have to re-hot glue it. The other problem I have is drilling the holes in these in these glass tubes. I'll break two or three of them just to get one hole through them. So um, I need I, I need a better way of drilling holes through the tubes if I'm going to sell these things. If I decide that I, it's just too much trouble, I can't solve the glue problem, I'm just going to then release the 6.2 version blueprints for you guys. And you can make the tops yourself and finagle with the gluing and the drilling and all that stuff. All right, one final thing. Now, in this 1,000 milliliter beaker is colloidal silver. And look over here. That is a picture of that very beaker's colloidal silver. That is probably about a 20, 20 to 22 parts per million colloidal silver uh, in there. It's a light, I don't know if you can see it, it's a light brownish color. Now, because of the things going around these days, which will remain unnamed, I I basically don't cook clear colloidal silver anymore, which is around 12 to maybe 15 parts per million. I'm leaning towards the higher end spectrum, which is a light brownish colloidal silver anywhere from 20 parts per million to 25 parts per million and that's what I'm using these days because of the extra strong things that happen to be propagating around and you, you know what I'm trying to say so um, I'm just passing that along to my alchemist friends there uh, you know my little network of people that take this stuff and the feedback uh, this is probably the better way to go right now and if I get, uh, and I have some an iron video. I promised one of my one uh, Jimmy I was going to do a colloidal iron 
video and I haven't done it in so long and I feel very bad so I'm going to get around to doing the I'm hoping I hate to I hate to promise anything because you know what happens when you promise something all of a sudden the universe says eh, 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 nope we're, we're, we're not gonna let you do that but I'm hoping this week I can get in the iron video how to make colloidal iron by itself as you know colloidal iron we make using stainless steel which is a, a combination of iron chromium and nickel which I think really works fine. But maybe someone doesn't want the chromium or the nickel. So then you got to make just the iron. So low voltage electrolysis, colloidal iron, possibly this week, I hope. We'll see. It all depends on how things go uh, with everything that whirls around here, you know. And if you haven't seen the, the short on the... Remember I did the coffee video? on uh, the site coffee siphon and we use the flame on the bottom well i i someone gave me sent me a for a present uh the light the halligan light and man i was blown away by this light it was so bright i, I couldn't stare at it i had i had to use my signature glasses and i shot a funny i wonder was what i think is a hopefully a little bit of a humorous video of um uh, that my experience with that intense heater, which is like 400 watt quartz, and nothing to fool around with, to be honest with you. I think it's hot enough. If you put a plate nearby there, it's probably hot enough to, you know, a paper plate. It's probably hot enough to put that paper plate on fire. But still, it was a lot of fun. It, it boiled the water in three minutes. The little short video doesn't show you that, but you can see the little bubbles coming out of it. But it did boil the water in three minutes, which I'm telling you, you know, this is my hot plate that I use for uh, heating liquid. This will take an hour to boil water. An hour. That, for, that, that light quartz-like thing boiled it in three minutes. That is really impressive. Anyway, I guess that's it. I will talk to all of you soon. And again, thank you again for tuning into my channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And click on the links in my... Uh, if you buy something from one of my videos, I get a commission on it. And every little bit helps. So pass on my links or, you know, if, if you can or if you buy, if you're going thinking about buying something that I've shown, even if it's something else, if you click on a link and you buy something else, if it's similar, I'll get what they call a bonus of uh, something, uh, something else. It's, I don't get to make as much. But every little bit helps with me producing these videos. This is Reality Creator Alchemy. You've earned a cool if you listen to my rant this long. Thankfully, you definitely earned a cool. Have a great evening or day, whatever it is, wherever you are.